Good morning, tubers. Working on the Explorer today. Again. Gonna work on finishing up all the electrical wiring I have going on for this thing. Um, as you know, I like how I started talking and all these trucks started rolling through. Anyways, um, we got these backup lights installed, weather stripped and everything. So we won't have any leaks. And you know, on the, let's see. I think it'd be last video. Uh, we kind of had a little bit of everything going on here. Uh, well, I got that power wire. Got the ground, so the ground for these guys here. Uh, run up. Ground and power run up here. The ground goes to that little hose. So I had power and ground run up here. Goes through this hose. And then wrap, comes out, wraps around, power and ground goes through my little grommet here. And then this ground <clears throat> actually, um, well I can't show you, I don't want to pull this down too much. But there's actually a body ground right here. And I sundid that and put an eyelet on the gray wire there and locked it down there. So then I just have this power wire here, the pink one, which runs down here. And then do a grommet here and then it goes down. And I have this hanging here. We're actually going to undo that. I'm going to extend it. And then I'm going to, I'm basically just going to run a bit oh, this way. And then I've got to wrap it with electrical tape. Or I might even just go to Napa and get some conduit and put the conduit on it. Just to make it quicker and easier. I've got that relay, and then I've got this guy, and then this guy. Got to add a circuit. I found a couple spots that are key on under the fuse box here. Um, this is going to supply power to turn this on. So when I did my five-speed swap, I had this carpet out and everything, so I took, made this harness and uh, stuffed it in here. So this. We're gonna drill kind of a large hole in the firewall. It's kind of kind of scary. I'm gonna drill a large hole and make a grommet. This is gonna go to the battery, and I've got a fuse holder that I'm gonna put on this so that it'll be fused. So if something happens, um, pop the fuse will pop. So this runs, I think it runs along here, but I need to, I actually need to tap into this because I'm going to split it off and it's going to go to the fuse box, which I'm going to put behind the switch panel there. All right. Got that wire there, it's in the conduit. I can't really show you, I've got it all in the frame now. And I don't want to climb under there again. It does loop over here, because I wanted to get it away from the catalytic converter. I drilled a hole in the uh, lip of that uh, floor pan there. Put a zap strap in there to keep that from flopping around. And now I'm at the point where I can actually flip this thing around and work on the wiring for the front end of the vehicle. So this, I'm actually gonna, I went a little over. So I'm going to cut this down a little bit, and then um, I'm actually going to get all this off of here. I might actually leave a little bit, that way I can take this all out if I wanted to. Never mind. 
So I think what I'll do is I'll take a, I'll just cut this off here. Cut that off, put a spade on it, and then connect it to one of these here. Now as for wiring those, these ones have two outputs on them. They're more for like turn signals. So I'll show you how this works. It's pretty easy. Let's get out of the wind. and This right here is gonna be your power in from the battery, and then this is your source. These two right here are your source. This is ground, so you'll run this to the body or the battery, which would be a little bit better. And this here is just your 12 volt or even a 6 volt trigger source. Um, I think these will run up down to 6 volts if you really had to. But 12 volts is normally what you'd run them on. Alright tubes, now we get to do the less crappy part. I gotta tell you, wiring all that stuff to the left gate, that was probably the most difficult wiring job I've ever done. <laughs> Okay, so this guy, we're gonna probably zip tie him off somewhere and then leave a service loop. And I don't wanna coil any of this because it'll act like a conductor or a, uh, it'll, uh, it'll do some weird electrical shenanigans. I really should have put a fuse in this relay setup here. This back one I'm going to use is my um, I'll be using that as my reverse light and then the front one will go to the ambers I have in the front here. So I'm going to work on getting these guys hooked up in here and then the next task after that wire harness is set up I'm then going to start finding a good spot to run our wires for our internal fuse panel our auxiliary our accessory fuse panel uh, harness we're gonna get that tapped into the battery I'm probably gonna go off of here which we're starting to get quite a bit on here so I think one more and I'm gonna call that a call that a day and then we'll probably attach the ground here since this actually goes right to the battery so that's just how I'm gonna do that so check it out I've got all my wires for this tied together. I used to tie the lights together because they run a small gauge wire. I've been using, um, let's see, not this size. This size wire is the same, or just a hair bigger than what these have. So that joins them together, and then I run 12 gauge as the main feed, and. So far, the only rat's nest I got going is just my old light bar relay. But so far, this hasn't given me any problems. I might wrap this up again later, but other than I don't really care. Maybe it could have put a little more slack on that. But light bar there is wired up. This is my trigger wire, or trigger uh, lead. I just gotta put a thing on there and uh, loop it back over here, and then it'll run down to a main harness. This is my main harness here for lights coming up from the back and then the lights for the front. And here's the two relays. I'm going to try and get back here with a drill. And I've got some self dabbers. I'm going to screw them into the inner fender right here. And then that way they won't rattle around or rub. But you guys want to see the ambers come on? I'm going to show you what the front lights look like. I've got my jumper here. I'll just jump the relays since our switches aren't set up just yet. So here's the light bar. And then we're gonna go front lights. You wanna see the backup lights? I like it, and I love it. <laughs> now I just need some more of it. <laughs> so unfortunately, this thing will not fit with this out of circuit here. This middle one that I'm plugged into is a uh, key on, key on, and 
or ignition on, engine on kind of source. So we're gonna roll with that. Um, I could probably get it to fit, or get the uh, cover to fit if I just chisel that out. But right now it's not something I'm wanting to do. So for right now, I think that'll be okay. And then that wire there, I'm gonna cut that butt connector off and I'm gonna solder in new wire. And then uh, we're gonna find a little spot for our relay where we wanna put it and then get that wired in. And then as for the fuse panel, but I think there's room back there where we can maybe zap strap it in there and behind that and be good to go. So I'm gonna take a look at that. So I've got this harness here routed down and I'll show you what I did. It's pretty clever. I found this grommet. <laughs> found that grommet right there. Cleaned that all out. Got some of that cab sealer off it. Pulled the grommet out. And went through that hole right there. And then routed it up. This is all the trigger wires for the relays. I'm about to route this up through here. And then I'm going to cut out a little hole in here so both of these harnesses can go through. So that means I did not have to drill any holes. If anything, if I wanted to add more, I can run it down through there and just get a bigger grommet. Or even take a piece of fuel hose and just um, wrap it, cut it, cut it, cut a slit in it and then wrap it around. Okay, I just plugged the fuse in for this main harness. I got the relay, has source coming off the fuse box back there. Oh, hey cat. Oh, they all know. So, fuse box is getting power from the battery. Fuse box is sending power to the relay. And then from the relay, it's giving this its source power. So let's see if it'll turn on. So if I put an accessory, it should. <gasps> it works! <laughs> Yeah! That's awesome. All right, here's the big test. Accessory. LED light bar. Spotlights are Backup lights, and then we have ambers. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so light bar. I can hear a little bit of... It's running by that antenna, so... Okay. So we might have to put some noise filters on our uh, uh, main power connections. So this does have a pretty weak antenna setup. It may need an amplifier, but I really don't listen to FM that much anyways. So check this out. Light bar, spotlights, zombie lights, no noise. I do get a little bit of uh, popping when it discharges. There's a little bit of a click, so I may have to put a, uh, what do I want to put in there? Because you're you're all of a sudden just shutting that off. So it may need like a bleed off resistor of some sort. That may, we may put that in there so that way it'll slowly bleed it off rather than just letting it s just all of a sudden stop and then you get that pop, so. Um, I'm happy with the aux part not having any radio interference, so that's fine. The antenna thing's a bit of an issue, but all right. 
we're all buttoned up now. Yeah, that came out pretty good. So you guys wanna... Oh, here, I'll go to the other side. We'll put the ignition on. It's a accessory. Oh, that comes on. Boop, boop, and then doop, and doop. Right as fuck. And then up here. Get your headlights, you got your fog lights. Those right there light up the road pretty good, and then this lights up the, the whole freaking everything. And then the cool part is, let's say you left them on, you turn the key off, they all turn off. So. Yeah. I'm gonna end the video here. I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of the evening, get some laundry done. Well, I've got a I gotta get something to eat and I'm starving. So, yep. Anyways, tubes. That's a wrap.